Major League Baseball. So Nick Saban, who now suddenly wants to back off his 10-second rule concerns about speeding up the game. He was quoted on AL.com. I imagine that stands for Alabama.com. So there's three things he talks about. I'll pick each one apart. He goes, I don't know that there's any particular scientific evidence that you could say. More guys get hurt in the offense versus, you know, hurry up or whatever. He goes, but everything we've ever done in the NCAA is about exposure. How many exposures does a player have? We try to limit spring practice, limit fall camp, limit the number of days you can hit now. Oh, okay, so let, let's talk about exposure. So when Bama faces, so basically what Nick is saying is fewer plays is better for football players. He's deeply concerned about that. Okay, so when you played Kentucky and had 80 plays, Alabama, and you just kept pouring 330-pound offensive linemen on inferior Kentucky defensive linemen, you didn't like that kind of football. I'm guessing you love that game because you physically dominated it. When Alabama and Nick schedule three dog teams every year like Georgia State, and you have 31 first downs and run 65 total plays, not counting special teams, and you are physically mismatched, you are dominating their inferior smaller players. If you're so against it, why do you schedule the games? If Nick is so anti-exposure, because exposure is bad for players, more plays, why do you schedule dogs where you're going to completely dominate, have more plays, Georgia State nine first downs, you get 31. You had almost 70 plays in that game. You wouldn't have 70 plays against maybe an LSU, you'd have 48. Why schedule, if you're really deeply concerned about exposure to plays, why do you schedule games in which you're facing smaller, inferior teams and you can dominate time of possession? The other thing Nick doesn't like is he goes, um, well, the other thing is um, the competitive imbalance created by the pace of play. The the creative the competitive imbalance. Okay, okay. So so you're worried about competitive balance. You schedule Chattanooga, Georgia State, Florida Atlantic, West Carolina, Western Kentucky, North Texas, Kent State, Colorado State. You know going into those games you're going to win by 50 points. You're not worried about competitive balance. You're not worried about exposure plays. In 2012, your offensive line, I have it here, averaged the same height and weight as the New York Giants. Yet you scheduled Florida Atlantic so you could pummel them for 65 plays against their smaller borderline Division I players. I don't buy into this. You're concerned because old school football is 335-pound offensive linemen and it takes them out of the game, no huddle. It takes your defensive front seven, your strength of your program, and it limits its dominance. They're tired. It makes you play smaller. That's what Oklahoma did to you. That's what Auburn did to you. You don't like that. It's not exposure. It's not competitive imbalance. You don't care about that stuff. Nick also talked about he's not sure if football should be a continuous game with no huddles. I think the, the bottom line is, was football intended to be a continuous game? Soccer's a continuous game, rugby's a continuous game, but for the physical elements that are involved in playing a football game and the number of plays that you play, I don't know if it was ever intended to be a continuous game. Well then why do we have two minute drills, which Alabama uses brilliantly at the end of games and halves. That's a continuous game for two minutes and 38 seconds. I've seen, I've seen Nick do a lot of end of half, end of quarter, end of game, two and three minutes. You're okay with continuous football then, but you just don't like it when it goes beyond that. So you want to control the continuous part. By the way, Dean Smith did the four corners. Paul West had at Loyola, averaged 122 a game. Even if you ran no huddle, the other team doesn't have to. Who says you got to control somebody else's tempo? Control your own. If you're concerned about it, then you do huddles. You slow it down for your players. I mean, this is the dinosaur complaining about animals evolving to fly. If you don't want to fly, don't fly. Now, by the way, the NFL has used real data, because I am for the safety. If, if, if speeding it up hurts more players, then slow it down. The NFL a few years ago found out that kickoffs resulted in more concussions. So they changed the kickoff. I was I understand that. 
I absolutely. By the way, that's what Tom Calhoun says. He's the Air Force football coach. He's on the rules committee, the safety committee. Tom Calhoun says, you know, like the NFL, let's just go find real data. I think the only way it should become a rule is if, if it is indeed a safety concern. And that can't be something that's a speculation or a possibility. I think there's got to be something empirical there where you realize, yep, this truly is a, you know, a health matter in terms of not being able to get a defensive player off the field. By the way, currently, if a player's hurt, there's a play stoppage for him to get off the field. But let's not hide behind the exposure and the competitive imbalance. You're feeding your players to get to 338, scheduling Chattanooga, whose defensive linemen are 288. And you're pummeling them with 58, 68, 70 plays a game. This is all about diminishing Alabama's dominance in the front seven, which has been his calling card, in which they've been just unbelievable at producing NFL-level talent. Good for them. But everything changes. NBA rule changes, NFL rule changes. Let's just call it what it is. Fear. And by the way, Auburn, as I predicted before, is going to be a major thorn in Alabama. They're going to be a major, because they're going to do this no huddle better than anybody. This Gus Malzahn's new. Now you give him another offseason, another spring camp, another fall camp with his quarterback. That offense is going to be humming neck. You thought they were fast last year. You go look at Chip Kelly at Oregon. They got faster every year he was at the program. You wait till next year and Gus Miles on. They're going to have that baby humming.